Bladder injury at caesarean section, how can we avoid it? No matter what stage of your career, this is essential information for safe surgery. In the next five minutes, we'll be breaking down some practical tips as to how you can avoid bladder injury, looking at what the evidence says about the best surgical techniques and discussing options for managing when complications arise. Bladder injury is a rare but significant complication of caesarean sections, affecting approximately 0.1 to 0.3% of caesarean sections. Risk factors that make it more likely are emergency surgery, having had repeat caesarean sections, and the presence of adhesions. The timing and reason for caesarean section are also important, with bladder injury being more likely in a second stage section compared to a first stage, and also more likely in caesarean section for arrestive descent, due to surgical trauma trying to deliver an impacted fetal head. The bladder lies closely related to the lower uterine segment, making it really susceptible to injury particularly during entry into the peritoneal cavity or when dissecting adhesions from previous surgeries. Preventing these injuries is critical to avoid long-term complications such as fistulas, urinary incontinence and patient distress. Risk of bladder injury is highest at three critical points. Entry into the peritoneum, creation of the bladder flap and expansion of the uterine incision. There are two methods by which you can enter the peritoneum, blunt and sharp entry. Sharp entry involves the use of scissors or a scalpel to cut into the peritoneum. While it does provide precision, it does carry a higher risk of unintentional injury to underlying structures, including the bladder, particularly if there are existing adhesions. One benefit of this method, however, is that when it's used carefully, it can allow you a degree of precision and control over the direction of the defect made in the peritoneum. Blunt entry involves gently lifting the peritoneum and carefully tearing it with your fingers or a blunt instrument. The initial incision should be made high in order to avoid the bladder, which is represented here by a yellow oval, as this may be pulled off in cases where the woman has had a previous caesarean section or if she is in the advanced stages of labour. You can then use your fingers to gently enlarge the opening in the direction of the arrow shown here. You should avoid using excessive force in order to minimise the risk of damage to surrounding structures. This technique is really useful in that it avoids sharp instrument injury, but it can be challenging in cases of adhesions. This video demonstrates a second method of blunt entry and shows how altering the direction of the pull can alter the direction of the defect created in the peritoneum. This may be another useful way of avoiding a high bladder. So what does the evidence show? Is any one surgical technique better than the other when it comes to preventing bladder injury? Most of the information that we have regarding caesarean section techniques comes from the Coronis trial. The Coronis trial was a large, fractional, unmasked, randomised control trial of over 15,000 women, which looked at five different intervention pairs, one of which was blunt versus sharp abdominal entry. There are no statistically significant differences found between any of the interventions. However, bladder injury was not one of the outcomes studied. As such, recommendations on the optimal entry technique remain unclear and are at the surgeon's discretion. There are, however, situations where one method may be more appropriate, such as the use of sharp dissection when there are dense adhesions. Creating a bladder flap has become very routine during caesarean sections. However, the evidence behind it is not very robust. There have been a couple of randomized control trials looking at outcomes when a bladder flap is not created. Incision to delivery interval was reduced in both. No bladder injuries occurred at all in either group in the study by Thule et al. But due to the small number of patients, neither study was adequately powered to demonstrate whether emission of the bladder flap decreased the rate of bladder injury. The third critical point for bladder injury is expansion of the uterine incision. The general consensus of the research is that blunt expansion is associated with a reduction in both mean blood loss and unintended incisional extension. Expanding the uterine incision in a cephalocaudal direction as opposed to a transverse direction was associated with lower rates of unintended extension of the incision. If bladder injury occurs, it's important to recognise it early. Look for clear urine in the operative field or a visible defect in the bladder wall. You can also check to see if the bulb of a Foley's catheter is visible or for gross hematuria in the Foley catheter bag. If in doubt, you can always check the bladder using methylene blue. Repair injuries immediately using a two-layer closure with absorbable 3O sutures. The bladder should be continuously drained with the use of a Foley catheter for at least 7-10 to 10 days postoperatively to ensure healing. So, how can we avoid bladder injury at caesarean section? The first step is to anticipate it. 
Prepare preoperatively by reviewing the patient notes for risk factors such as previous cesarean surgeries or prior abdominal operations. Ensure that the catheter is in and draining prior to starting your cesarean section. Intraoperatively, be sure to clearly identify the anatomy before attempting to gain access to the peritoneum or make uterine incisions. When there are dense rectus sheath adhesions restricting access to the peritoneum, you can try and create space laterally by using a paramedian approach before moving towards the midline. Carefully dissect the bladder flap to mobilize the bladder away from the low uterine segment by grasping the loose uterovesical peritoneum and opening it about two centimeters in the midline below its fixed attachment before extending the incision laterally. To recap, the risk of bladder injury can be minimized by anticipating the possibility choosing the correct entry technique and adhering to safe surgical practice. Understanding the anatomy, being able to mobilize the bladder properly and being able to deal with adhesions are key to trying to prevent complications.